In the workshop, fixing the hand pump to the baseboard and piping it to the boiler. The steel block is screwed to the baseboard as I showed in the last episode, so now I need to put the pump on top of it, and the pump fits on these four 6BA studs. And now comes the difficult part. First of all, I put a washer over each stud, and then I use a 6BA nut and tighten it onto the top of the stud. At first this job seems quite simple. What I did before I put the pump onto the block was I made sure that the nuts fitted onto the studs, and as everything was OK, I then sat the pump on the block and fitted the washers, which is what I'm doing in this clip. And now, with one brass washer fitted on each of the studs, here comes the difficult part. I have to engage a 6BA nut on the end of the studs. And this is surprisingly difficult because of the shape of the pump and the fact that these nuts are very small and my fingers are not very small. So how did I get the nuts onto the studs so that I could tighten them up like this using a small spanner? Well, first of all, I used a very small pair of surgical forceps, and this wasn't the best idea. Then I tried using a pair of pliers to hold the nut while I engaged it on the stud, and that didn't work either. And all the time I'm trying my best not to mark the paintwork on the pump, because it does mark very easily. I even tried a piece of silver solder rod bent at 90 degrees right at the end. But the most effective tool for doing this job was my modified pencil. But this simple job took quite a long time to do. I think it was about 35 minutes in total. I lost the will to live on several occasions and dropped quite a few of these 6BA nuts on the floor, which subsequently were never seen again. This sort of jobs kind of teach you patience, really, because you have a choice. Either you do the job or you don't. There's no middle ground. The job requires one brass nut and one brass washer on each corner of the pump. And finally the job was done, with minimum damage to the paint, and a quick touch with a black felt tip pen should put this part of the job right. I was surprised to find when I removed the union nut that this right angle fitting is the top part of an old Stuart water gauge. So it doesn't use a union fitting, it just uses an o-ring. And temporarily I fitted a short piece of copper pipe into the end of the fitting. I went up to Blackgate's Engineering and bought some Viton O-rings for this purpose. And while I was there, I bought some firing irons. And the shovel is just the right size to go through the fire hole door. And then by accident, I found the bonus feature, which is the fact that the wooden block which has magnets inside it is very useful for holding the firing tools. So the pump's fitted in place, now it's time to pipe it to the boiler. And to do this, I'm using a length of quarter of an inch diameter pipe. To bend this thick pipe into shape, I used a pipe bending tool. Then I did a dummy run by temporarily fitting coned unions onto the end of the pipe just to make sure that the entire assembly was exactly the right length. In the outside part of my workshop near the door, I'm about to silver solder the coned unions on the end of the pipe. I've put the union nuts on the pipe first, and I've just applied some flux used in the end of the silver solder rod. In this clip, I'm applying the heat, and I've been doing so for a while. I've edited this clip. As soon as the end of the copper pipe starts to glow red, you'll see that the flux takes on a watery appearance, and this is the time to apply the silver solder. That's one end done, now to the other end. Same principle, as soon as the end of the pipe starts to glow red, and the flux takes on a watery appearance, just touch it with the end of the silver solder. And by capillary action, the silver solder will flash around the joint. I received a comment from a viewer a few weeks back, and he was telling me he was having difficulty with the silver soldering. I pointed out that it may be useful if he watched a few more of my silver soldering videos, and I think what he'd actually done, he'd gone to the local DIY store and bought a pot of flux and some silver solder, so he was a bit confused really. Soft solder is also silver in colour, but it's not silver solder. I'm using Silver Flow 55 sticks of silver solder, and I'm using Easy Flow number two flux for this job. I get quite a lot of questions from viewers asking me things that I've covered in great detail in several videos, and all I can really say to these people is, please watch some more of the videos. When I edit these videos, I try to make up for the language problem, so if you're not understanding what I'm saying, just watch the pictures. It's all fairly self-explanatory, and most of the time all the clips are assembled in sequential order. Normally, I would put this piece of pipe in my acid bath, just to get rid of any flux residue and any oxidisation, and there's plenty of that. And you've just been watching me polishing the pipe on the polishing spindle. 
and in this clip I'm fitting the pipe to the pump. I'm going to test the pump now, but before using it I'm just applying some oil to the moving parts. I'm only doing this to lubricate the external links. The internal part of the pump is lubricated by the water that passes through it. The pump now feels silky smooth and I'm pumping some water with it. I'm pleased to see that there aren't any leaks and everything's working fine. For a coal-fired steam boiler you need two methods of getting water into the boiler. This is just one of them and it will be fine for this boiler for a steam test in the garden because if for any reason the pump packed up and it's not going to do that I could simply undo a union nut very quickly and lift the entire boiler off the fire. Pumping water into a steam boiler which hasn't got any pressure in it is very easy. But when the boiler's in steam, with up to £80 per square inch of pressure inside it, the handle on the pump will be much more difficult to move. So it needs an extension, and this is the one that I made. All it is is a piece of phosphor bronze bar that I drilled two imperial drill sizes above 3 eighths of an inch, so that it comfortably fits over the existing handle. Then I put a nice chrome handle on the end of that with a plastic ball on the end. I think this came off some sort of old machine tool. It was in a drawer in the workshop. Very shortly I will be making a video about the coal fired steam test. But for now that's it. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.